Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar titled Getting to Know Nixenta Cloud Enterprise Storage in the Public Cloud. My name's Don Lopes, and I'm joined by Mike Lechen. Mike, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, wherever you are. Good stuff, Mike. I, I, we've got the, the final of our, our four webinar series sessions here today talking to Accenture Cloud. I'm very excited uh, to, to share this with our, our attendees here, folks that are going to listen to this on demand, uh, because this is one of our, our newer solutions, and I think it's been, been something our, our customer base has been asking us a, a lot about. Um, so before we jump into the content itself, two quick housekeeping items. Uh, one, all of your lines are muted, uh, just to avoid background noise, and as I mentioned, we are recording this, so just to make this a little bit cleaner for folks that are going to be listening to this on demand. So heads up on that. Uh, but uh, please use the questions uh, section of the control panel. Uh, it allows us to try to make this as interactive as possible, and we'll infuse those questions um, in as we can. If for any reason it just doesn't work out, we'll, we'll bring them back towards the, the end of our session. Um, we will probably have about a 30, 40 minute webinar here, so more than enough time uh, to get all your questions in and make sure uh, you, you walk out of this session uh, fully knowledgeable of Nixenta Cloud. So with that, I just want to, for anybody who may have missed some of the other sessions, review the overall Nixenta product portfolio. Uh, so we've got our, our core flagship solution, Nixenta Store, which is a full feature SDS for your enterprise applications. Uh, it, the foundation of Nixenta Cloud is, is really built uh, and leveraging uh, some of the core components from Nixenta Store. So we're going to spend some time talking about that. And those that are familiar with Nixenta Store uh, should see some, uh, you know, things that are uh, consistent with, with the technology and functionality. On Nixenta Edge, this is a rather newer technology, something we've been developing for quite some time, but it's our scale-out SDS for your cloud native apps really those use cases and needs where you're looking at more of a scale-out technology um, for, for those applications, uh, something that's been really growing in our business and gain, gaining a lot of momentum. On Accenta Cloud, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about that here today, so I'm excited for that. And then Accenta Fusion is our centralized management analytics, uh, brings a, uh, a comprehensive management framework um, that we're going to spend a lot of time talking about uh, related to Accenta Store, Accenta Cloud here today. Um, so for, again, anybody who's an Accenta Store customer uh, and, and looking at leveraging an Accenta Cloud, uh, you're going to gain a lot of strong benefits by uh, also uh, taking advantage of the centralized management and analytics within Accenta Fusion. To look a little bit one step deeper into the overall portfolio, uh, again, Accenta Store is that enterprise-grade file and block scale up designed for those core workloads like your home directories, uh, your virtual workloads, maybe your backup and archives. On the far right-hand side, again, is, is our Nixenta Edge solution, uh, scale-out object file block, uh, more designed for those uh, big data cloud archive type of, of workloads. Uh, and then Nixenta Fusion as your, your management analytics uh, and, and single pane of glass, and Nixenta Cloud. Um, which is, is we're going to spend a lot, a lot of time here talking about uh, that technology. Uh, so I'm not going to steal too much of, of Mike's thunder here. So with that, actually, I'm going to turn it over to Mike and, and let him talk a little bit more about Nixenta Cloud, give you an overview, talk about some of the use cases, and uh, walk into a demonstration, play a little bit in the AWS marketplace um, in today's uh, rest of our webinar. So with that, Mike, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Tom. I think I know I want to be able to get to kind of what Nixenta Cloud is doing, and like you said, and some examples of it. But I think one, it's so much more powerful to see it. So I do want to make sure that we we get through these first few setups to be able to within this, this half hour, forty minutes, get you a good solid look at what you can do with Nixenta Cloud and why it matters. Uh, as you said, this product came out of a lot of customer requests. Uh, we've been using Nixenta Store for for many many years. Uh, for our file and block solutions and having to have the ability to go outside of just on-prem. So when we were looking at 
uh, Nick sent us store with software defined storage, we always said that it was all about flexibility. And that flexibility was freedom of hardware, uh, freedom of how you used it, different use cases. But what it didn't give you was that ability to move outside of your four walls, other than replicating to another set of your own four walls. Uh, and we had a lot of customers who said, look, I want to be able to go out and operationally use things in the public cloud. Uh, we're moving to more of a hybrid cloud strategy. And our next cloud in AWS was our, is our first take at going onto that true hybrid storage cloud, uh, providing you both uh, file and block services at an enterprise feature set out in the cloud. Now, there's a lot of different options out there uh, that say, well, you can do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But we wanted this to give you the same look and feel that you have of making that public cloud seem like it's just another location within your own enterprise. So that being said, we've already set some pre-configured uh, AMI images, the, the Amazon machine images. So for those of you who are maybe VMware, more VMware type people, uh, that's really kind of the template. And that's where we're building off of. Uh, and that's, you don't have to do anything with those. Those are ready to go. You actually go into the AWS marketplace, subscribe to a listing and just say, go ahead and configure this and push it out. And I'm gonna show you how we do that when we get to the demo on it. Now, you gotta keep in mind that the feature set on Nixenta Cloud was really set to be right in line with those enterprise sets, having things like data reduction, thin provisioning, and I think even more importantly, things like replication. And that's where this came into play. Maybe you're not trying to put all your data out in the cloud, maybe it's a subset, uh, but having seamless replication and a seamless look and feel between Nixenta Store and Nixenta Cloud for our users was very important. Along with that, having things that can do, make it quick, easy, rapidly deployable. Uh, and I'll touch on that again when we get to the next slide as well. Uh, but then I think the last key thing on this to notice is you'll see the little icon, the little graphic of the Fusion interface. Now we want to make sure that the analytics and the way that you access things was very consistent across your entire Nixenta storage environment. So you get that same advanced analytics functionality, uh, the widget-based screens, being able to know what's going on with your cloud storage just as well as you can with your local storage in your data center or in any of your data centers around the globe. So let's look at what, how we're going to use this. And, and that's what we, we get to on this next slide here is really the examples of where this could fit. Now, the two in the middle are the first two that really came up. And they're the two I'll touch on first. Um, the first being the back of an archive scenario. Now, a lot of people will say, I want to be able to have a way to put data efficiently out into the public cloud. I don't want to keep paying for storage locally for stuff that I'm not touching. Well, this gives you that ability, or it also gives you the ability to deal with things like compliance reasons. Maybe you are, have medical information or some sort of legal information that you're required to keep it for a little bit longer term. Well, that's probably not your entire large component of your data. It's a smaller subset. Maybe you have 100 terabytes out there and you have 20 terabytes that you need that actually have to keep that third copy. We'll allow you to do that and do that without having to go purchase another array, put it in a colo, put that appliance in place, and manage it completely separately. Now you can do that all in one spot. The next is that enterprise file services. And this actually came up a lot with our first few customers on Nixenta Cloud that were initially using that backup scenario and then realized that they could turn on file and block services for their end users. So they were able to do things like have branch office access to files without having to have the, the constraint of another little appliance out at that branch office. Now, why would that matter necessarily? And why would I want that at the cloud? Historically, a lot of people said, I have to keep my files local. Well, now that most companies and so many companies, I should say, are using things like Google Apps and Office 365 or other SaaS applications, those branch offices and those smaller locations already need to have significant bandwidth to be able to support the business today. So adding in the access to their file services allows the enterprise IT department to keep it centralized, manage it, maybe even do replication back and forth, 
without having to put another array out on site. It really minimizes the need for a lot of these appliances at small branch offices. And you can do that then on an operational cost. So if you're seasonal, you can bring that up, bring it down as needed. Uh, maybe just replicate out because you've got an HR thing that you need to send a whole bunch of files out and give quick access to users all over the globe. Now you simply bring up an extent cloud environment in the region around the globe that's closest to them and get them access. Going to the far left, look at the, what we list is rapid DevOps storage on this. Now this is really for your DevOps, your, your test dev environments. Uh, it decides to save enterprise IT from a little bit of the hassle that we've seen from what is always coined as, as shadow IT. Now shadow IT really comes into play when users say that the central IT department is being too slow and can't get me what I need. The ability to roll out a storage solution for your tech developers in 20, 30 minutes and say, here you go, here's your mount point. And by the way, I'm replicating that production data set over so that you can work against it. That will be ready as soon as the replication is finished. Gives them a lot more confidence in the enterprise environment to be able to avoid going to third party solutions and taking it out of IT's hands. The other thing that's really advantageous on that is the ability to actually turn off the storage. So those test dev users, oftentimes I've had them come to me and say, hey, we need the storage. Very, very rarely do I have a user say, hey, I'm done with the storage, you can get rid of it now. By being able to keep that centralized, I can use those analytics I talked about with Fusion to see when it stopped being used and actually turn off that storage because it is just an operational cost. Now the very far use case on the right hand side here, application migration uh, is something that has been a struggle for companies that are looking to move to the cloud for quite a while. And a lot of those are traditional off the shelf solutions that require storage sitting right close to them. Now you can take that traditional storage, that SAN and NAS solution, put it in the cloud, replicate your data to it, and then run an EC2 image of whatever that application is right beside it. Now, if you need to go over things like layer two to be able to get to it, that's a possibility. You don't have to route between them just to move something to the cloud. So you've got a lot of different options. And I think one of the keys to that, and the first one that really comes up, and I think just to give you an illustration of it, this next slide gives you an idea of what it looks like when you're doing this backup archive type scenario. You've got that physical on-prem application that's running. I want to replicate that out to the, cloud, the public cloud environment, replicate it very easily through the same replication methodology that we use, whether it's to Next Central stores or going right to Next Central Cloud, as well as then manage that through the same management analytics interface with Next Central Fusion. And you'll notice here, Next Central Fusion is sitting out in AWS. That's just one of the options. As we talked about before, in the previous webinars, an extensive fusion can run either on-prem as an OVA, as a container, or you can go ahead and run it out in AWS as well. The nice thing for this is when you're doing project type solutions, maybe you don't have an extensive store sitting on-prem. You can run this all within AWS as well to bring that project up, work on it, and bring it down as needed. Now, I think a lot of the confusion around cloud has been because there are so many different pieces. Now, on this next one, as we look at what AWS's components look like, and I found this, I, this graphic at some point, uh, search around the internet with all the different pieces of AWS. Now, there's a lot to take in on what to do with what. Um, really, what we concentrate on are the compute, the storage, the security, and then some administration for it. And with that, on the compute side, to give you that kind of what is what, we utilize the EC2 component, the Elastic Compute, that produces the virtual machine. Inside of that, that's gonna have the AMI, the machine image. As I mentioned, it's pretty much the template. That allows us to deploy rapidly and be able to have everything pre-configured for the end user. Next comes into, what do we do for storage? On it? Now, there's a bunch of different kinds of storage available. The key ones that we'll look at are EBS and Elastic Block Storage. That's really similar to you putting a physical drive into your server today. S3 is an object that you're used to. We talked about a good bit during our Edge webinar. Uh, and then Glacier does some real long-term archiving. 
Now, we're not going to work with much on Glacier uh, today, but it is something that we keep in mind as it gets some more usage in the market. Security-wise, it's always important to make sure that we've got everything tied in with the identity management set that is already included with the AWS side of things, but that also includes things like availability zones, different regions, and security groups that we'll touch on. All of this then gets managed normally through the AWS console or through a CLI tool. Now, putting that all together is a lot to, to take, well, how does that all fit? Now, if I look at what a traditional environment is, and that's going to be on the right-hand side here. I've got a couple head nodes, single head node, multiple head nodes, running some sort of storage software with then just JBot storage behind it. That's your traditional scale-up storage solution. That's what the sense of store would look like in any physical data center. Now we wrap a firewall around that uh, to be able to protect all of our data, and then physical walls in your physical data center. And maybe you've got that VMware template if you're, you're rolling out machines. Maybe you're rolling out as a VSA, and you've got a VSA that's running file services on top of hyperconverged sitting in that physical data center. That same VSA with an extensive store can replicate just like the physical arrays too that we talked about. Now, that translates into an EC2 image, matches up to that head node. That's really what you're going to have. That storage software is our extensive cloud software on top of that EC2 instance. Now, they come in all sorts of different sizes, and you'll see M4, R4, C3, C5, and then different sizes after that. Now, we go ahead and take care of a lot of what the suggested size is for you as we do the deployment, so we can kind of simplify that a little bit. We then utilize that EBS storage, and I mentioned the block storage in the back end. You've got a couple different options. Either you can run in an SSD environment, or you can run with spinning disk in the back end as well to get the hybrid storage solution just like you want on-prem. Now, that firewall is opening ports on your local site. A security group is going to do the same thing. So you have to configure that. That's all wrapped within a virtual private cloud that is part of, of Amazon's solution. Now, going from there, there's kind of what that, that typical data center looks like uh, and how we, could, how we can grow into this. Now, if I've got a traditional private data center running on a private IP space, first thing I'm going to need to do when I go to look at some sort of hybrid cloud solution, whether it's AWS or another, you're going to want some sort of VPN, some type connection between your private data center and that virtual private cloud out in AWS. Now, as soon as you've created that setup, now you probably, if you're already maybe using it, you may have a few web servers out there, uh, maybe a database server sitting in the back end, but you really don't have uh, a connection on your storage side. That's a lot of traffic that has to come across that VPN. You don't want to come in and out uh, as much with that data, where you might be rolling out multiple, multiple web servers or something out in that side. Now, what we've done is added into that virtual private cloud. And as you'll see pop up here, that's where the next set of where an extensive cloud and extensive fusion sits. Now, an extensive cloud is going to sit out in that virtual private cloud as an EC2 image with that block storage behind it. Now, those database servers, the web servers, whatever need can access that storage local to it to really increase your performance out in the cloud. Giving you centralized management from the extensive fusion out there. And you notice we've got all sorts of different ports, and these are just some examples of what those security groups or what the firewall within AWS is going to look like. Both outbound traffic, you're pretty much allowing those things, inbound very specific, and I can tighten that down. So I don't need to have full access out of my public cloud. And I can really keep the security uh, as one of the first things and the primary focus for my environment out in the public cloud. Now, this shows it, that showed it with one site. What about if I've got multiples? Now, if you've already got an enterprise set up that has a replication going on between multiple different sites, maybe you've got a single head node array out of a small site that you're replicating as a target, primary site with a couple different head nodes in the HA environment, you've got those replicating. Now you can move that into what we really look at as the hybrid storage cloud, replicating some of that data as needed out to an extent of cloud accessing it in and out of it, and my, managing all that 
through a cloud-based manager with Next Sense of Fusion. It really gives you a whole nother option on what you're looking at in, in the cloud. All of this is really made possible with Next Sense of Fusion. That's what really kind of takes all this and wraps it all into one. It, without it, you've got a whole bunch of separate stuff sitting out there. So when we look at Next Sense of Fusion, the nice thing is it is a prepackaged appliance as well out in AWS. Um, it's deployed via the marketplace, and I'm going to show you that uh, as we go. But it does everything looks just the same. You'll notice that the fourth of these appliances here has a little cloud around it. That's an extensive cloud instance, and you'll see that when I get to the demo here in a few minutes. Consistent look and feel, whether you're looking at your one site, multiple sites, going into the cloud, giving you a true hybrid storage cloud environment. Now, an extensive fusion is just something that we put out there. We don't do an extra software charge for it. You can run it locally, so there's no charge at all, and you can actually access the cloud instances or local by doing that local copy as well. Or you can run it out in AWS. Now, the reason we're able to put all these together is the API that we have in the back end with Nextent Fusion. Now, Nextent Fusion accesses our REST API that's fully documented off of both our Nextent Store and our Nextent Cloud instances. So, when we have those, I can do things like manage it through Nextent Fusion. I can script against all the same instances. If I'm looking at having my own scripting solution and I want to script against the cloud as well as on prem, very easy, very possible, all because of the API. Now, that API also manages to build everything in and gives you a real easy look and feel, uh, integration then from the API into things like VMware, in the integration with OpenStack, and now in the Next Center Cloud. And that's really where we want to go ahead and show you a demo of what this can do. So, as soon as we switch over access, here, I'll show you what our extensive environment looks like. So, Don, if you could, there we go. So, first off, the easiest way to get to the Nextcentric Cloud solution, simply do a Google search for AWS Marketplace. If you're not familiar with it, it is the way that AWS sells third-party and enterprise solutions. So if I go back to the, the main AWS Marketplace solution here, you'll see that there's all kinds of different things. Now, you could go right to storage. You could dig through and try to find it. Or the easiest, just search for an extension. Now, when we search for an extension, notice the first thing you'll see is we see an extension fusion here. That's going to, like I said, give you your first pane of glass. Now, I'm not going to worry about doing anything with fusion today because I already have a couple instances up. But the first thing you would do is click here and subscribe to it. And when I say subscribe to it, that's where I'm going to go into one of our next center cloud instances. And you'll see this continue to subscribe button. So the first thing you need to do to be able to start utilizing any AWS solution is through the marketplace is subscribe to it. What this does is accepts the URL uh, and the terms that are out there. It's the same thing you would have to do otherwise, but with the cloud, you've got to be able to put it out there. So I'm going to and subscribe to it. Now that I've subscribed to it, I can actually come over and look at our regular Nixenta Fusion interface. So I do have, you notice there's quite a few here. There's, there's Fusion, there's different ones up to capacities. Now, very shortly, you're actually just going to see two of these because we're going to manage it all for you through this Nixenta Fusion. So I'm going to come over to Nixenta Fusion. And for those of you who weren't able to make the, the Fusion, and mix up the store webinar, make sure you check out the video there and we'll post it uh, along with the rest of the series. I've got a few systems already set up here. I've got four systems that are four appliances that have helped in our data centers around, around the country doing testing. Uh, one of them is an AT environment. And uh, this one is actually a VSA. You know, that's related to the VSA, it's all of that. And then I think I've already created one target one that has a cloud instance. But I think before I go into that one, let's go ahead and deploy one so you can see what this all looks like. All I've done is log into the center people. I've set my, my access for AWS in my credentials. Again, it's a quick kind of overview of what you're looking at. And notice we have a cloud access key here. Now, this is set in the settings 
of the sense of fusion and said at one time it was all you need to Once that's set, that's going to be the account that we're going to deploy systems within. So I'm going to call this one demo Dory. You can do things like use the instance ID that's already default, or I can go ahead and create my own password. Or now you want to set a time zone to make sure that it, it matches up with other systems. Easiest if you're using the same one, just put Mac browser or grab your time zone that you already have. Uh, so it shows I'm on the East Coast here. Now, where do I want to put it? This is actually going to give you the option of all the different regions that you're able to put it into. We have this one for a dev box, just a little more locked down, but I'll set this to put it into the region out in Oregon. Connect to my virtual private cloud, and you'll notice there's these tooltips in front of each one. Now, this is just going to make sure that you're aware of what each one of these things is doing. Set a subnet, and I know this one will connect back in. And then that security group. Now, we have a bunch of security groups already created. Uh, on this one, you can go ahead and say, I'll say there's an extensive cloud default we already have. I'll select that. You can also select multiple. So if you want to have it where it's a little more open, I can select that and select all of them if I want. If you don't have a security group or aren't sure what ports to use, if you put new default group, we'll go and create one for you as well. Now, termination protection, I think, is very important for the administrators to know and understand because that's what's going to stop other users out there using AWS, maybe you have a corporate account with a bunch of accounts under, from deleting this course. They have to come through here and okay or validate the termination before you can delete the storage solution. And then, do you want to have access to the public IP? So obviously, you should have a private IP, uh, some sort of VPN or a NAT gateway, uh, whether you need that or not. Once you've done that, what are you trying to do with the system? Now, do you want to do a proof of concept? Uh, are you doing it as a big backup and DR solution? Um, for this one, let's say we're going to do a proof of concept. Now, you'll notice we do different things with each of these. You've got a couple different size devices to use. Proof of concept, it's all using GP2 or the SSD device size. I'm using one or two terabyte drives because I can expand it later, but I want to be able, I can only expand it within the spacing that allows us. AWS does have some limitations on how many devices you can have in the back end. So we want to make sure you're picking the one that is going to get you the best chance for today. That doesn't mean you can't change it down the road and expand it either. Now you'll see we're using specific EC2 instances. And then when I jump to a backup DR, I'm actually using SC1. Or HH, these are standard spinning disk devices provided by them. And if you want to go into a nice large one, I can go up here and do a 270 terabyte backup target. But for this, that, that's going to be a bit excessive just to roll something out for a demo here. So I'll just do a small little POC with three terabytes. Go ahead and save the point now. Now it says it can't take up to 30 minutes. It really depends on how loaded uh, AWS is. May you see this? This is already the point. Now, I'm going to move on to show you that, that use case that we talked about on the replication. While this is the point, I have to come over to my ECP console though and see it. So if I can trust my ECP console here, there's demo drawing that's already being built, and it, it will be initialized in the We will see it probably before I can finish out demoing what the replication and things like that can do. Now, I already had a common feature. So I can see on my staff, I don't have any loads on the computer, I'm not going to see any records yet. Hey, Mike. I'll put it down, yes? Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause you for a second. Do you mind maybe dialing in? I think we're having uh, a little bit of challenges regarding uh, network on your side there, since you're using, uh, you know, voice, running a demo, and uh, also, um, you know, running things there. So if, if you don't mind, uh, maybe pausing, dialing back in. Uh, folks, apologize for this, but just figured, I know it's getting a little, little rough to hear everything clearly, and uh, we want to make sure as we're going through this demo, you've got a great chance to to check everything out. So uh, apologize, apologize for that. Great, Mike. Sounds much better. Thank you. No worries. No worries. So, okay. Well, uh, as I was kind of getting into a little bit here, I'm gonna I'm just kind of walking through what one of these extensive cloud instances looks like uh, once it's already deployed. 
So we've deployed this one. I have a pool here. I can go look at what that pool looks like uh, as far as the disk. This is very similar to what you would see on any physical array as well. So I've got a couple disks in here. Um, they're being utilized already. Uh, now I've got a file system created and I've even done set this up for, for data protection. Maybe I set this up as a replication target. Now, there's a lot of different ways that I could do this, but I'm gonna let's do some scheduled replication. Now you notice I am the target for this other primary system. Demo for FS1 and it's been running. Now, if I jump over to that system, so I know that's 72 happens to be my BSA. Go and tell it to, to look at the schedule replication here as well. And I can see that I've already got that set to go twice an hour and keep some copies of it. Now, I can go create more file systems, create different policies on this. So I've got a snapshot policy, I've got a replication policy. Let me add a new file system from here. So demo FS. Now I want to go ahead and replicate that one as well, right out to the cloud. So I'll create a new service for it. Demo replica. Target device, that's our next sense of cloud device we already had. It already populates the, the data for me. And I'll give it a place to put the, the data set. Now I just need to create a schedule for it. Just say hourly, run it on the hour, and just keep one. We can set this however many local or remote snapshots you want to keep. And I'll go ahead and create the replica set for it. Now if I come back over here, you'll notice demo during is actually running now and is initializing. So shortly I'm going to be able to see that on our next fusion interface. That replica job is ready to go, and now I'm replicating two different file systems from my local BSA out to my Nextenta Cloud instance. Now, when I come out to this Nextenta Cloud, I want to look at the components of it. Now, maybe I want to add capacity to it, or there's a lot of different options of things that I might want to do. So first off, let's look at adding capacity. What am I going to use? I want to use that same type of storage, and because I was already using the one terabyte, let's, let's keep with the one terabyte drives. Uh, I've already used three. I have a max of 40 devices, but let me just add another, say 10. And I could actually even add devices if I wanted to have write cache uh, and adding in some SSD for write cache if I wanted here. So by adding this, it'll go out and add it. It does take a few minutes to add all the different uh, disks to it. So we'll go ahead and give it a try and let it go. That demo during is now shows it's available. So let me jump over and be able to show it as soon as it has the capacity here. I'll just open the browser again so that we can, if this is working for a second to be able to get through all this has the additions here. One of the things on this one you'll note is we actually still have the public IP. You can have that removed if you want it, but you've got access to your private IP. The security group that we set at, that Nextenta Cloud default security group. And then the right subnet and VPC that we set when we cut when we did this through the wizard within Nextenta Fusion. Okay, so that one's go ahead and, and add, it already added the devices. It just took a minute to add those. So I should go to the pool. Edit my pool. I had this as a stripe. So I can go and add more disks to this pool if I, would, if I want to. So I'll go ahead and add disk, add a disk. Take that, now I'm gonna, now I've got a six gig pool out there that I've set up. Coming back to my initial dashboard, and this should about wrap up where we're at on the demo, is I want you to see where we're at 
with that demo during appliance. You notice it's now connected. I can come in and check the license on it. And see, and right now this is running as an hourly license within AWS. I can convert that to an annual. You do have that choice of running on an annual subscription as well. Or I could upgrade my license as well. Maybe I don't want to use this as that POC anymore, and I want to change to maybe a high-performance system because I'm moving past the POC. I can do that all within the wizard. So, Don, I think that gives a pretty good idea of what Nexenta Cloud can do uh, and some of the integration with Nexenta Fusion on it. So, why don't I turn it back over to you, and I'll, I'll let you get to the last couple of things to wrap up what we're doing and answer some questions. Great, Mike. No, thank you very much for running through a, a lot of great content and uh, sharing that with folks. So let me just share my screen back with everybody. We, we've, as we, we rolled out an extended cloud, you know, obviously we have this webinar here and appreciate everybody for joining. We've got a, a great white paper too that we've recently published that goes into a little bit more detail than we've covered here. So another great follow-on resource for those of you looking to, to learn a little bit more. Um, if you're looking to just get also into some of the, the more detailed specifics around Extent Diffusion and, and understand uh, the, the technology itself and also uh, maybe how you could leverage an Extent of Store a little bit more, um, we've got a great product guide also available for, for more education, more research. Uh, you know, a few things that, that aren't here, but I'll, I will mention, you know, if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one demo, you know, please do reach out to us. Uh, if you'd like to, to trial it yourself, you know, the great thing uh, with um, uh, AWS and the, the marketplace is our technologies are free there, um, and, and we can definitely uh, work with you to get you up and running and, and, and make sure you get set up right. Um, so, so please do reach out. We'd love to help you with, with either of those. This is, as I mentioned earlier, the last of our, our webinar series. Uh, the great thing is we've recorded them and they're, they're all available. So just to visit nextenda.com slash webinars and you can, can go in and view all of these on demand. Uh, you'll get the recording of this. You'll get the slides from this session in about 24 hours. So keep your, your eyes open uh, in, in your inbox for, for that information along with links, easy links to the resources I just mentioned a, a few moments ago. And then again, uh, the, you'll be able to visit uh, nextenda.com slash webinars to view this webinar and and others and so with that that's that's our session uh, so uh, thank everybody for joining Mike thank you for a, a wealth of, of great information there um, you know covering everything from the technology itself highlighting some of the use cases uh, going through you know the setup on on the marketplace and, and how you can leverage Fusion across your current infrastructure and uh, your, your Nixonic Cloud infrastructure, all within a cohesive, consistent, you know, you weren't, learn one tool and, and you can, uh, you know, leverage your architecture. And again, I think this, this shares with you the, the power of, of a software-defined environment. With that, Mike, uh, we're a little light on questions, so any closing remarks or any, any wrap-up from your side? Uh, yeah, I, I think the, the key is that this really, the extent of cloud as itself gives you that flexibility just across the board. And I think it gives the user something different and a new option uh, and something to really think about as they look at expanding their, their software-defined model. And like you said, I, the integration with Fusion really, I think, exemplifies what can be done with software-defined uh, at this point. So I look forward to talking to people about it. Great. Again, thank everybody for the time. Any questions or you'd like to learn more, easiest way is to email sales at Nixenta, and we'll, we'll get back to you as, as soon as we can. And uh, again, thank you for the time and have a great rest of your, your day. Take care.